Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. You've learned the fundamentals of use state and use effect. Let's start applying your new skills and build a simple blogging app. Today we'll be using Bootstrap, Create React App, JSON Placeholder as our mock API, and more. Let me show you what we're going to build today. As I said, we're building a simple blog today, which will allow you to use hooks in a more realistic way. We have a checkbox that reveals a form to create a new post. Pressing the Submit button adds it to our list of posts. You can also delete the post by clicking on the Trash button. And on the individual post, you can only see part of the text body, but when you click on the card, a modal opens up to reveal both the title and text body in full. So far, we've been using Code Sandbox to build our apps. It's a valuable tool and I still use it for testing purposes, but it's time to move on. We're going to use Create React App today for our project. Create React App is so popular that the React docs themselves recommend it as the best way to start building single page apps in React. From the Create React docs, link will be in the description. Let's scroll down to find the command to create a new app. As long as you have NPM installed, there's no need to install anything additional. Let's head on over to our terminal, cd into a folder where you want to create your app. For me, that's documents and then projects. Now paste in the command and replace the name with whatever you want. I'm just going to call it my project. CD into your project folder, mine is called My Project, and let's list out the contents. To start running the project, just type npm start in your project folder. Once started, your project will be served at localhost 3000. Now open up your project in your favorite code editor, for me that's VS Code, and use control backtick to open up the terminal. We'll be using the built in terminal from now on. I turned off my project in my other terminal, so I will restart it in VS Code. Let's open up the source folder and delete some files. Let's delete all the files we don't need in the project. This is an optional step, but it will definitely make it easier when we start adding new components. Now head on over to index.js, remove all unnecessary import statements so the app doesn't break. And lastly, we're going to go to app.js which as usual is the file we'll be working in the most today. Here we're going to remove unnecessary imports and everything between the divs. Also, let's get rid of the class name. We won't be needing that anymore. Inside the divs, let's add a h1 and write hello Marco. As you can see, changes are reflected on save. So our app is up and running, but it doesn't look that great. Let's change that. We're going to use Bootstrap to make things look a lot better. Let's head on over to the React Bootstrap documentation and click Get Started. Here we can see for installation, we need to run this command. So let's copy and paste it over and put it into our terminal. This will install all necessary dependencies in our project. If we go back to the docs for a sec and scroll down, we'll see an import statement that they suggest we put in our index.js file. And that's exactly what we'll do. Now let's close up the file and start building the app. You can see that the bootstrap styles already kicked in because it got rid of that horrible font from a second ago. Okay, let's open up this window a little bit. And let's search for layout in the Bootstrap React docs. We're going to grab everything from inside of here and paste it into our project. Bootstrap uses a system of columns and rows which use Flexbox under the hood. Let's remove everything but the container, one row, and one column. And now let's import container, row, and column from react-bootstrap. And as you can see, the content looks much better. It's centered in the middle of the screen with only a few lines of code. 
We'll start by creating a file in the source folder called PostForm. And as usual, we're going to import React from React. We'll also import Form, Button, and Card from React Bootstrap. And we'll export a default function, which we'll also call PostForm. Since I know that AppJS will pass down props eventually, I'll just receive them now as parameters in the function. Let's just add a simple header in the return statement that says PostForm. Back in AppJS, let's remove the h1 we had in there previously and replace it with PostForm. Let's not forget to import it at the top of the file also. Looks like our component is rendering out OK. Let's take a quick look at the React Bootstrap docs again, and this time search for Form. I'm going to leave them open so that I can use them as a reference. First, we're going to start with a form component, which will wrap everything else in our component. Next, we'll add a checkbox, which lives on form.check. It has a type of checkbox, a label, which we'll just say is add post. There's also a check property that takes a Boolean. It will reflect whether the box is checked for true or not for false. And of course, let's add an on change function. And for now, we're just going to add a console log that says checked. As we can see, the checkbox is checked, which is what we expected since we set it to true. Let's open up our browser console to see if the log is working. And it is. All right, let's use two way binding to make the checkbox work as it should. Let's create a piece of state. We'll call the value checked and the function set check, which we will start off as false. We also need to import use state from React. We can replace our hard coded value for check. In our on change function, let's use the set check function, get the previous state and return the negation of that state. Let's add a divider and a form group. Within the tag, we'll place a form control of type input with a placeholder of title. We'll also need a second form group, but this time within, we'll have a form control with a label, which we will call post body, and a form control this time with a prop of as set to text area. Next, we'll add the row property, which controls how many text lines you will have in your text area. Let's try setting it to three, and now to 10. Let's conditionally render the form based on if the checkbox is checked or not. Add some curly braces to denote that we're gonna be using JavaScript with the variable checked and and. If you're not used to this syntax, it essentially will only continue past the first condition of checked if it's true. This can also be done with a ternary expression, but I think this looks a lot cleaner. Now let's copy both our form groups into some parentheses as the second expression. Here it's necessary to wrap both form groups in a React fragment. This will remove the errors that we're seeing right now. And let's test out the checkbox to see if it works. Yep, it looks great. Let's add some margin to our first row element to give the checkbox some breathing room. Let's bind both our inputs to state, create a title value, and a set title with an initial value of empty string. Next, Let's create a body state value with a set body function, also starting at an empty string. Let's bind title to a value in the input. In the text area, let's set the value to body. And in the first onChange function, let's set the title from event.target.value. And once again, with an onChange function, we will take event and set the body from event.target.value. 
Let's add a button. Let's set the initial state of checkbox to true so that we can see what we're doing. Let's name our button submit, a variant of primary, and a type submit. Now in our opening form tag, let's add a prop of on submit, and this will take a function called handle submit, which we can start making right now. Handle submit will take an event as a parameter. We'll call prevent default on the event object to prevent a browser refresh. Now let's add a console log with on submit and the title value to test out if everything is working. In our form, let's add a test title and submit. Looks like our form is submitting correctly. Let's add another row to our app.js file so that we can include a header with our app name. I think it should be centered, so let's add a style prop with text align center. Let's copy down one more row so that we can start displaying all of our blog posts. In the source folder, we'll create a new component called post list. In the post list file, as usual, we'll import React from React. We will export a default function called post list, which will receive props from its parent component app.js. And once again, let's add a header of post title to test that it's rendering out correctly. In app, we need to import post list so that we can use it in our third row. And we see that it's rendering out okay. It's time to bring in use effect from React. Above the return statement in your component, let's add use effect, which takes a function and a dependency array as a second parameter. We only want this to run once, so we'll add an empty array as our dependency list. Let's head on over to the JSON placeholder website. This is the service we'll be using as our API. JSON placeholder is a great API to get started with. There's no authorization needed, so we can purely focus on React and UseEffect. We'll copy over their sample call and paste it into UseEffect. We'll need to replace the end of the URL with posts. Back in our browser console, we can see that we have an array of post objects, which includes, among other things, an ID, title, and body. Now that we have some real post, let's add some state to app.js with a value of post and a function of set post. We'll start this off with an initializing value of an empty array. For this, we'll need to import useState from React. And now in our fetch call, let's replace the console log with our new setter function set posts. And we need to pass down the props to our post list. Let's deconstruct posts from the props and change our return statement. In the return, let's map over the posts and put each post body in a p tag. This is just for testing. We'll change this in a minute. Okay, so it seems like everything is working. I know that I'll be using a few components from React Bootstrap, so let's import them now. Card, button, and card columns. All available in the docs if you search for card. Now let's add a conditional statement to make sure that post exists before it moves on to mapping over it. We'll wrap everything in a div and give it some padding. Inside the div, let's add card columns, which will give us the mosaic Instagram look. Let's move our mapping into card columns and use curly braces to signify that it is JavaScript. Now let's make some modifications inside of our map. Now let's add the card component with a unique key of post ID. React needs keys on all children of the list so that it knows which to re-render when one is modified. Within the card, let's add another component called card.body. This will give us some additional styles like padding for the content inside to look better. We're also going to add a card.title, and this is where we're going to display post.title, and we'll also uppercase it just to give it some emphasis. Under card title, let's add card.text, which will display the body of our post. I'm going to use template literals here to display a sliced version of the body of our string with three dots to signify that it's only a preview. Let's cross our fingers and take a look. 
and it looks good. In the next video, we'll be adding the ability to add and delete posts, clear and close the form on submit, and display posts in a pop-up window. Please subscribe, like, and comment on this video. Great job today and see you in the next one.